Michael, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you for the support recently, and today we'll be getting into the third of our 10 videos of the Top 10 series. We've got the wide receivers today. Um, unfortunately, no Michigan players. Sorry for all my Michigan fans out there, um, but nothing nothing on this list right now. Um, hopefully in the future, we'll start cooking, or maybe at the end of the year, if we uh, start you know cooking the way I think we will. But we'll start off here. Number 10, uh, arguably my favorite player on this list probably is Dante Cephas. Uh, unfortunately for me, he plays for the Penn State Nittany Lions, so one of my good, bitter rivals. This guy is all world, man. He's one of the many, many, many that left from Kent State, the Golden Flashes. He's a Maction legend. He was doing it well against good opponents, too, including Georgia, but you'll see in some of these highlights, he was cooking Maryland already. Uh, Deontay Banks, a former first-round pick, not former, well, was a first-round pick, former player for the Terrapins. He was cooking as well in one of these clips here, but he's a damn good receiver. He lays his shoulder down. He's able to get quick, good separation, big play. I'm surprised he went to Penn State and not a more of a throwing offense, but I think that he's going to be that downfield threat that they've kind of established the past few seasons. You know, you kind of look at their pipeline, you know, John Dotson and Parker Washington, just the quickest last two ones. They've had a few guys, Allen Robinson, sprinkled in there as well. This is the next guy I think that's going to be a big-time pro as a receiver over at Penn State. And I think he is going to be doing a lot there, and I think he could sneaky be all first team uh, receiver we obviously had a pretty tough division to do it with with uh, all the Ohio State guys but I think he's definitely the second best receiver in the conference uh, could be first man of the year but who knows up next we've got the first of two Washington uh, receivers we got Jalen McMillan Jalen did a lot last year he was uh, again one of the good receivers in Washington they had like three guys in the top 100 or so um, he really was one of the the main reasons why Penix was able to throw for as many as he was uh, many yards it is as he was he was the 15th um, guy last year in terms of receiving he had 79 catches for a thousand yards a uh, thousand and a thousand one hundred basically it was two yards short uh, with nine touchdowns he was doing a lot um, he was uh, a little bit better than his alternative Rome in, in stats up and over in Washington they spray the ball over the field um, him and, and Rome are going to be absolutely unbelievable this year and um, I have him just behind Rome just because he had a little bit less stats that's basically all it is so uh, Rome was a bit more efficient with more yards but that's not about him it's more about Jalen I think uh, Jalen's going to be a you know probably early second round late first round draft pick it's not the best receiver class they've got two generational receivers in this class and then uh, a little bit of a fall off but I think I would not be surprised if the Washington boys were three and four off the board behind the uh, top two in my list here so um, we move on to number eight the first transfer or the second transfer actually because Dante transferred the second transfer of this list we got Dorian Singer transferring from Arizona to USC now, I can't find many highlights for him. I got one clip that's going to be about a minute long, and it's just one catch. But uh, that one catch is absolutely unbelievable. Reached out with his one hand and grabbed it. Um, I think he's going to probably be the top guy out there. I know they've got a really loaded receiver room over in uh, USC with Mario Williams and uh, Jerry Rice's cousin and then – or nephew, excuse me. And I know they have um, – What's his name coming in? They have that freshman coming in who's absolutely unbelievable as well. So really good room. But I think with Dorian being handpicked by uh, Lincoln to come in here and, and take over the wide receiver one position, in my opinion, I think he'll be wide receiver one from what I'm hearing at the camp. It's what I'm seeing as well. But I think he'll take over for sure. Uh, up next, we have the biggest receiver on this list, uh, Johnny Wilson, the six seven absolute monster and absolute menace out of Florida State. He um, had only a few good se few games. He didn't have a ton of stats, but um, he's just massive, and he's going to be probably wide receiver one for the Seminoles. He had 43 catches for 200, or 897 yards, so he was averaging 21 yards a catch. He had finally had five touchdowns, but he was averaging 21 yards a catch. This guy's massive, super tall, super big, and he's got an absolute massive guy on the field. I know I keep saying the same thing, but when you watch him in these highlights, I mean, you're just seeing him right now, he's just comically large uh, to these guys. So... He's going to be doing his thing this year, and, and along with Keon and, and Jaheim Bell, I think this team's going to be absolutely unbelievable on offense. And uh, if their defenses can and can figure it out, we'll we'll see how it goes, man. But I'm excited to see what he brings to the team. Up next, we kind of talked on him already. We've got Romeo Duze. He's uh, 75 catches, 1,145 yards, with 61 as the longest reception. He's averaging 15.3 per catch with seven touchdowns, so a little bit better production than his counterpart Jalen, but. Same thing holds, right? These are the, the probably the best wide receiver one-two punch in the country. I don't think that's particularly close. I guess you could say the best receiver room in the country. Eh, I guess the Ohio State guys would probably debate that, but I would say that they're really close. Marvin's is so much better than uh, Abuka that Abuka's not even on this list. Sorry for the spoiler, but 
Uh, I got a Dunze uh, ahead of Jalen by a few spots. It's just, again, just a little bit better production, kind of like uh, Creighton Allen and uh, Nick Singleton from yesterday, where it's like pretty close, uh, same stats, but just better production of one of the two. So not much to really split these two apart, and I kind of talked about them already. So, yeah, watch out for Washington. It's going to be absolutely spraying around the field, and it's going to be very, very, very fun to watch, especially when they're doing it to Michigan State. But shout out my Spartan friends. Um, number five, we've got the, I believe, yeah, final transfer on this list. We've got Zakari Franklin out of Ole Miss via UTSA. Um, lit up UTSA last year. Uh, meet, meet to all the Roadrunner fans out there. They were unbelievable last year as well. I, they, they were uh, ranked for a large majority of the year. They're in the college football playoff rankings last year, uh, the second best of the group of five teams, I believe. Um, I know they end up losing a few games at the end of the year, but they were really doing their thing all year, and a lot of that was Zakari. Zakari was a uh, you know super fast receiver. He goes up there and he gets it. He's got an awesome celebration where he does like you'll, you'll see a few times here. But I love what he's doing, and now you put him in Old Miss. He's got that bit of a swagger. He's a speedy, quick, big-bodied receiver, but he's got that swagger edge that a lot of these Ole Miss guys have had, right? You saw it with A.J. Brown. You saw it with D.K. Metcalf. They've got a bit of swagger with him, and, and he fits that for sure. So he won't be getting probably as many balls as he would with Quinshawn on the field, but when they pass it, it's probably going to be to him. So uh, him or uh, Caden Prescore on the tight end. But I love what Zachary Franklin's going to bring this Ole Miss team, and if uh, they start having a lot of success, he's going to be a, a pretty big part of it, in my opinion. Number four, we go over to the Bayou. We've got Malik Neighbors, a uh, name you'll be hearing a lot this year. He's LSU's number one wide receiver, and LSU's number one wide receiver has been very good the past few seasons. I know Keishan Butte was not all that, but I'll tell you right now, this Malik Neighbors kid is. He's uh, one of the better receivers I've seen in a long time. Sick name, too. Um, you hear him all the time yelled out by Vern and the guys over on, over on CBS, but he had 72 catches for 1,017 yards. He had uh, th- only three touchdowns on the year because uh, Jaden was running him in too much, but you'll see him what he's doing against that Florida State new defense, right? You got Fentrell Cypress, the corner coming in for Florida State, and we're going to see pretty quickly um, what, what, what's going to happen w- with him. So I think Malik is going to torture him that game, and I think he's going to be a big reason why they end up winning that game. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out, if my prediction is correct. But yeah, moving forward here, we've got number three, Lad McCockney. Now I know he's probably way too high on a lot of people's lists here, but he does not get any respect that he deserves. When you think of players on Georgia that are good on offense, you hear stats about it, obviously, because he's the quarterback. But all you hear is Brock Bowers. You don't hear Lad McCockney at all. Lad runs the ball. He's a quick slot guy. He can go deep. He does it all over the field. He's a hard blocker. He's everything you absolutely want. The guy here reminds me of Wes Welker. I know it's a lazy comparison because they're both white, but Wes Welker, Julian Edelman, you know, Danny Amendola, like the, the gritty Patriots guy. I mean, he's got little gritty Patriots receiver written all over him. A tiny bit of Cooper Cup in him. Again, I know those are all lazy comparisons because they're all white. But, but yeah, I think Ladd could be the best player on this offense. I know Brock does his things, but I think Ladd could get 1,000 yards receiving this year. Um, he got close last year. Obviously, a lot of games really helped him out. But um, he had 762 yards and 58 catches, 13.1 uh, with seven touchdowns. So I think you can definitely boost those numbers up. And he had a fair bit of rushing yards as well. So they'll probably try to do that a little bit with him as well. So um, coming into the top two, it's the top two you expected. I like to get cute sometimes, and uh, you know, if I was being a full troll, I'd, I'd flip and have number two be number one, but I can't do it. Number two, Xavier Worthy from Texas. Uh, hook him to all those that believe. He's a real good man. Um, big body receiver. He's able to go quick. It, everything you want out of an NFL modern pro receiver you got in Xavier Worthy. Um, it would be great if he was a Michigan guy, but, you know, our good friend had some off the field issues regarding his mother with uh, Josh Gaddis, which I won't get into, but he's uh, no longer going to be in Michigan. Clearly, he's uh, been at Texas the past three seasons, or past two seasons, and he's going to go pro this year. This kid's awesome, man. I, I can't overstate it enough. He's got a really good fire edit video as well, too, that I was able to grab to put as the highlights over this right now. But yeah, he's going to be the main force on Texas this year. Um, I know they got Jatavion Sanders, the really good tight end, but. You lose your one-two punch at running back with uh, Roshan and Bijan, and um, you're left with Xavier Worthy, which is a pretty good uh, thing there. But he's going to also have Adani Mitchell as another receiver around him to help out, um, you know, take off some of the coverage. You can't really double-team Xavier as much as you probably need to and want to. But, yeah, that's what I got for Xavier, and um, I think he's going to be a main reason why Texas is uh, potentially back this year. We'll see how Kool-Aid matches up against him uh, in uh, – Brian Denny in week two. That's going to be a great matchup to watch if you uh, go back and watch the tape afterwards. 
Number one, again, it's I can't even do it as a Michigan fan. I, I couldn't. I couldn't troll. It's Marvin Harrison Jr. This guy, what can he not? What what, what can he do? Uh, I almost want to be quiet and just let this highlight video play over me right now because this dude is just insane. That catch he has at the end of the highlight video or whenever I stick it in, it, when he's catching the ball like off his foot basically against Michigan State, it's crazy. He had that one where he like contorts his leg backwards upside down and like barely gets it down. He can take hits. Obviously, he you know still had the ball on, uh, still had the ball in his hands when he got his head taken off against Georgia, and he arguably the way would have won the national championship. He doesn't get concussed, uh, as crazy as it is, but he does it all. You know, I don't think he's going to go top three in the draft just because of positional value, which I do hate positional value. If you you know I'm a Lions fan and everything I was saying about positional value and how dumb it is, but he's going to go not top three. He'll be the first receiver off the board, and if not, it's due to injury, which I would never wish on anyone. But, um, you know, if he gets a nick, it's one of those things where he shouldn't want to opt out because, like, you're that good. And there's no reason to even worry about it. So uh, I think he's going to do unbelievable things. He, he's a favorite for the – he's a, the top non – I think it's what, the top non-quarterback for Heisman for a reason. He's the main reason that most Ohio State fans don't really care who's a quarterback because as long as you're throwing a Marvin Harrison, I think me and you could get a couple hundred yards with uh, Marvin Harrison catching our balls. So – um, that's what I got for this video. Let me know down below what you think. If I missed anyone, I know some people are going to be pissed that I don't have some other USC receivers on here. If I don't have uh, a Mecca Buka, I think it's going to be a big, everyone's like, where is he? I, I texted my good friend Isaac and I was like, I don't have him on here. And he's like, oh my God, you're crazy. Uh, whatever. I don't want to get into it, but I think it's really easy to be the, the, the wide receiver two or three behind the crazy Ohio state rooms. But, um, yeah, that's kind of all I got for now. Again, if I missed anyone, please tell me, uh, please like, and subscribe and, uh, have a great night, everyone. Peace.